I think we're just about ready to get started. So today we have Doug Cunnington here from Niche Site, or Niche, excuse me, Niche Site Project, um, and you're going to be talking a little bit about um, keywords and your golden ratio. Um, so I'll go ahead and kind of let you um, get started. Awesome. Well, thanks a lot. Thanks for inviting me. I'm happy to be here chatting with everybody. And I really started this uh, keyword golden ratio out of like desperation. I was sort of in a tough spot. And if you're completely unfamiliar, it's the keyword golden ratio. It's a data driven way to find keywords that are generally underserved on the internet. And typically the, the great part is most of the time, if you publish content using the KGR, it's gonna rank really quickly. Sometimes within 24 hours, sometimes within a few minutes, I've been hearing some reports that it'll rank in a few minutes. And it's really useful for a couple reasons. Uh, number one, if you're just launching a site and maybe you, you haven't had any success before, maybe you've actually launched a couple sites and you've never been able to get that much traffic, it's perfect for that application because you see that you can publish content that gets traffic and ranks quickly and it gives you that momentum that you need. And another great application is for people to have an existing website, maybe it needs a little kickstart, maybe it's been stagnant or plateaued in traffic and you wanna give a little push and you don't want to you know, spend a, a whole lot of time link building perhaps or a whole lot of time you know, publishing a lot of content and then waiting and waiting and waiting for it to rank. So as we were chatting about earlier, I'm actually on the road right now. So I pre-recorded some of this talk to help out. So I'm going to send it to the clip right now and fingers crossed that technology works with us today. 2014, I got that dreaded email from the Google web spam team. It was a manual penalty. My heart sank, my stomach turned and I completely freaked out. Then I tried some of the normal things that we do to recover the traffic. I disavowed links, I got better links, but everything I tried, Failed. It didn't work because basically all my original links were garbage. The links were gray hat, so Google didn't like me. But I didn't know any better. I was a little behind the best practices. So I was trying to do the right thing. I was following the link building plan by Pat Flynn of Smart Passive Income, but unfortunately, it was probably a couple years old at the time. So there were some bad practices. After months and months of trying to launch new sites with the old content, I kept failing. So I knew I needed to shift my strategy. The problem was I was targeting keywords with search volumes of 2,000 to 9,000 searches per month. I tested out what would happen if I started publishing content targeting keywords way out on the long tail, like really far in the long tail. These keywords had much, much lower search volumes, sometimes only 10 searches per month. Of course, this isn't a novel idea. We've probably heard of long tail keywords. In fact, there's a whole book written on the topic of the long tail. It's by Chris Anderson. And if you haven't read it, it's pretty good. Here's the thesis that applies to keywords. So I sort of shifted it around. Websites and publishers can and will generate most of their traffic and revenue from the long tail of niche keywords, which serves an even rarer searcher and the rarest of visitor needs. So the long tail keywords dropped out of popularity, at least at the time when I was studying it, and it wasn't really in the conversations back then. And that's why I was aiming for those higher search volumes. I was just doing what everyone else was doing, which often is not a path to success. So to start off this test, I published about 20 articles targeting these ultra long tail keywords with virtually no competition. The results were great. I was really surprised, so I decided to publish 200 articles and the traffic exploded over the course of a couple months. I didn't do any link building at the time. And in this presentation, I'm gonna talk about the keyword golden ratio, including the formula and the theory behind it. I'll give you some real examples on how to find them. I will show you some of the keyword golden ratio phrases and how to use them in content. Then we'll go over a few common questions and pitfalls, and then we'll do some Q&A. Love Q&A, so would love to spend a lot of time on that. 
Now here's the great part. The keyword golden ratio works for big, big sites or small sites. And if you are a one person shop or you have a big content team, it'll work. I've tested and used the KGR for affiliate sites, but it works for any type of content. Informational and how to articles, e-commerce sites, local professionals like plumbers, doctors, dentists, and so on. So it works for brand new sites and well-established sites with thousands of articles. So basically it's, it's universal. This will work on any kind of website where you have content. So let me know in the chat if you have heard of the KGR, the keyword golden ratio, and I'm curious how many people have used it before. So just let me know in the chat. And I'll be able to see it over there. So here's the formula for the keyword golden ratio, which I'll just refer to as the KGR. The KGR is the number of all entitled results divided by the search volume, where the search volume is under 250 searches per month. I'll explain the all entitled coming up if you don't know what it is at all. If the KGR is less than 0.25, then the term should rank quickly, like in a couple of days or a few hours. As the ratio gets higher, there is more competition and it takes longer to rank. So if the KGR is over one, that is a more competitive term. In the simplest sense, if the KGR is over one, then you know there are more pages on the internet targeting that specific keyword phrase. It doesn't mean you can't publish content targeting such a term, it just means you're gonna to have to rely on other keyword and competition analysis methods to understand the level of competition. So let's dig into the details of the formula before I show you a demo. Now the all in title that I mentioned before, obviously a critical part of the formula, that's an advanced search command for Google. So it's one of those many advanced commands that are rarely used except by SEOs. All in title checks for the web pages that use all the words in the query in the meta title. So generally, that just means the author of the content is intentionally targeting that keyword phrase. The author wants to rank for that term, so they're putting it in the title. So you would find the all in title in this way. Now, I'll show you so it'll be a little more clear instead of me just saying it out loud, but you type in all in title in the Google search field, then colon, and then your search query. You don't put any spaces, you don't put any quotes, no single quotes, no double quotes. The quotes will match the exact phrase in the exact order, and we don't want to do that. We want to have sort of a more generous way to find the results, so don't use the quotes. I typically use a simple spreadsheet in Google Sheets to make the process go a little faster, and I'll be using a free, or sorry, not a free tool, I'm going to be using a paid tool, but it's very inexpensive. It's called Keywords Everywhere. You could use any keyword tool that provides a search volume, though it doesn't matter. It's just Keywords Everywhere is very easy to show in a demo. So let me show you a real example now. now from this recording right here, I'm gonna send it to another recording over here. So very, you know. here's the spreadsheet. And as I mentioned, it's fairly straightforward. There's not that many columns here. We have the keyword column. We have the all in title number. We have the search volume, which we'll get from the keyword research tool. We have the KGR value, which there's a formula here and some conditional formatting. So we can see green is good under 0.25 and anything over one is red. Of course, you can tweak those values if you want. And the cool thing here is we have a search string. So if we just put in the keyword phrase that we're looking for here, it will automatically populate this search string so we can click on this and avoid having to type in all in title and all that stuff in Google, in the Google search field. So it saves a little bit of time and just makes the workflow a little bit better. So we're gonna go through a little bit of an exercise here of bubbling our way just a bit with finding a keyword golden ratio phrase, a keyword phrase that should be compliant and the thing is sometimes it's going to be hard to find these you'll have to search around and it's not immediately obvious I didn't want to make you suffer completely through this and watch me fumble through it so I do have some that should work out okay 
and I'll go through the full exercise here. And if you do have any questions or anything, definitely ask in the comments and we'll be able to catch up and follow up either, you know, right in the comments or during the Q&A. So I started off with essentially a non-keyword golden ratio term. And I mentioned before that I'm using keywords everywhere. So I was looking for a camera recently, wanted to upgrade. I'm a bit of a, a gear nerd, a gear geek. And I was looking for a mirrorless camera. So we see, I, I put in best mirrorless camera for travel. And it's a small font here, but keywords everywhere tells us the search volume is 1,000 searches per month. So obviously that is too high for the keyword golden ratio, which needs to be under 250 searches per month, 250 or lower. But what I'll do just for this exercise is to show you how you would calculate it. And I'll just copy and paste this search phrase right here over to the keyword area. Now I mentioned that the search volume was 1,000, so I could just manually key that in here. And as I mentioned before, we have this basically search string that we can click on. So it's hypertext and all we have to do is click on it and then it'll pop up all in title, exactly what we need here. And we'll see that there are 58 results. Okay, so this is the number that we get, 58 results. Perfect. So if we go over here, we put in the all in title. We, what did I say, 58? Is that right? It's 58. So technically, right, this is, quote, KGR compliant because it's under 0.25 and there's not too much competition here. However, when we look and we see that the search volume is over 250, that tells us, oh, it may be more competitive. And don't worry, I'm going to talk about this more in some of the pitfalls and people run into this quite often. So I'll come back to it, but this is technically not KGR compliant, even though we have this value of below 0.25. Nevertheless, it does give us some good ideas on where to head. So one cool thing with just Google in general, we have all these related searches right here. So we see under 1,000 mirrorless cameras for video. We have uh, travel cameras under 500, best DSLRs. Google, in fact, knows us better than <laughs> We know ourselves, they know what we're looking for. Between them and Amazon, they, they pretty much know everything. But I digress. We also have, with keywords everywhere, these related keywords. So those are often exactly what we see when we click on the search field. These are a wonderful source to find additional keywords that are related to what you're looking for and you know, in fact, that people are searching for. So I'm using keywords everywhere because it's the simplest way for me to show the search volume, but it's actually a fairly effective tool and fairly cheap compared to competitors. So one other place um, you can get some ideas is if you scroll all the way down to the bottom. So I'm just gonna quickly scroll down and then we see often it's almost exactly what we saw before. So mirrorless cameras for beginners, budget mirrorless cameras, and so on. As I mentioned before, I worked ahead so that you wouldn't have to suffer and watch me fumble through. It is a little tough to find these sometimes. Now, we see here with best entry level mirrorless camera, one of those suggested ones. So again, it is 390 searches per month, again, above our threshold of 250. So not ideal, but just for the sake of the exercise here, I will go through it again. So I'm just gonna copy and paste the keyword here so we can keep track of it. I think I said it was 390, so that's good. And then we can simply click on the link and it'll pop up the all in title. Great, we see there's 62 here, so 62. Now, one thing that people often ask is, should I click all the way through the results? So sometimes if you go all the way to the bottom, you can, it'll say like repeat the omitted results and so on. No, don't worry about it. You, you don't need to worry about those. Those are often duplicate. You don't need to consider the other 85 or anything like that. So you could just take the number up here, in this case, 62. All right, so 62, pop over here and type in 62. You can see the mechanics are pretty trivial here. So not, not too tricky. What is tricky is finding KTR compliant keywords. 
So let me kill some of these tabs here so we can get into it. And then we have best vlogging camera under 500. All right, so a little bit more specific. This is a great format right here, by the way. Best product type under a certain price. And again, you see all these different related keywords. This is where you deep dive. So you find one that is sort of promising, and then probably most of these others are gonna be pretty good too. So once you find one, you will often find several. So best vlogging camera under 500 has a search volume of 210. I know that's very small, but I'll read it out for you. So under that is 210, right? So search volume of 210. So best vlogging camera under 500. It's always fun to watch someone run the, run the mouse and click on the wrong spots. All right, so 210. <laughs> you don't want to see me type. That's even worse. That's even worse. Trust me. Okay, so I'm going to click here again. We'll see the best vlogging camera under 500. We have 31 results. All right, so we'll put in 31. And if my math is correct, that is actually... Uh, that's great. Okay, so we have 0.148. That is clearly below 0.25. And this, this seems like a good one. So this is a winner here. All right, so again, I mentioned these have search volumes that are too high. So those are kind of the borderline there. And I'll talk about that more coming up. And we'll look at one more here. We'll just look at one more here. So we have best compact point and shoot camera under 300. So very specific, very specific here. And the search volume reflects it. There's only 10 searches per month for this one, only 10. And I wanna emphasize that I went down this low because I actually, I go after these kind of keywords. These are totally fine. Many times you will have a lot of additional long tail keywords that are so long tail they don't show up with any search volume. And sometimes I've heard this multiple times from people that I work with and coach and just random people on the street, they'll say that one of their most high trafficked pages is a page where they're targeting a keyword with a search volume of zero, zero, all right? They're expecting to get no traffic from it, but inevitably, right, they end up with getting a ton of traffic. So this is a funny one here, right? So your search did not match any documents. This is a super common question. People ask, what does this mean? Does this mean it's not good or is it good? This means it's zero. So if you apply the formula, number of all entitled results, zero divided by any number, well, that's gonna be zero. Zero is clearly below 0.25 and we have a good keyword. Now, one of the other things I need to point out, another pitfall, let's say, you get a value like this. You get zero, all in title. You have a small number of searches. It seems like a slam dunk, right? You should always go and Google the term. See what the results are. See if there are similar sites as your site. See if you think you could rank. And you kind of, I mean, you should try it. I, I almost always encourage people to try it. You should publish the content, see what happens. But we've Googled this term, we can see the results here. There's a featured snippet for a site called Street Bounty. We have Picks and Focus, we have Photo Workout. All of these seem to be using the keyword in their title. And additionally, they seem, based on just the domain name, I would venture to bet that these are affiliate sites another site that potentially a young site could compete with. We also see Best Buy, a few Best Buys are in here, and Forbes, some other bigger sites, but a lot of these, a lot of these seem like they are competitive and a young affiliate site could compete with them. So this is, these are the mechanics to go through it. So very straightforward. This is a simple spreadsheet. It does make it go a little bit faster. It's freely available. I think um, I've been able to get a link over to share with everyone. You can adapt it. I've, I've seen people 
add more columns, add some more details that help them track what's going on. In fact, you can turn this into um, a much more complex spreadsheet, although I, I don't encourage anyone to make anything more complex, but you can do it. You can do it. So that, let's switch cameras here. So that is how you find an actual real set of KGR terms. I mentioned earlier that you can use the KGR for any type of site. I didn't give you any uh, examples and showing screenshots of traffic or anything like that, but I could just let you know that I spend most of the, my time in affiliate marketing. So I, I talk a lot about those Amazon type products or maybe from B and H, something like that. So all those cameras are related to that. One other, I guess, fantastic example to give is uh, someone I coached. And he has a drop shipping site. He has an e-commerce sort of back end, I think it's via Shopify. So he has a Shopify store. And basically he was running ads on like Google AdWords. He was getting traffic that way. His business was going fine. Actually, things were going great. It was growing. And I think he was doing something like around 100000 per month in top line. Revenue. So pretty good. Except he got, he got banned from Google AdWords so he could no longer run ads. He was trying to figure out how to get traffic to his site from Google, just organic search. He ran across the keyword golden ratio and started implementing those. So he worked at it hard. He published a lot of content. And basically, he got in touch with me in the last uh, couple months here let me know that he hit, for the first time ever, in a 12-month period, he hit over a million dollars in top-line revenue. So pretty amazing, and his business is doing really well. Doing very well, even through the pandemic. He's actually thriving right now and doing even more business than he was before. So just a quick example of e-commerce, and you can use it for informational-type sites or re really anything. It's very universal, anytime. There's keywords used, when people are searching for stuff, you're going to be able to find some KGR type terms. All right, so let's get back to it. You can use a more sophisticated keyword research tool like KW Finder, that's one of my favorites, maybe SEMrush or Ahrefs, and I actually use all of those at, at different times. And I find it's challenging to find a KGR term at first, but once you get started a lot of times you'll find what i'd like to think of as a pocket of kgr compliant keyword phrases they're all sort of related maybe uh, similar users now i'm going to let you know a couple of the common formats for a kgr type phrase so how to do x some activity uh, informational keyword type when you're thinking about the best of type Keywords, you have best A for B, which is a product focus keyword, where B is like an application or maybe a type of user. So best running shoes for women or best running shoes for a marathon. So either a type of user or an application. Then another great one is product one versus product two. Obviously, that is product focus works really well for affiliate type sites. You can go to a tool, like I said, the KW Finder or some rush and search for some general term, right? When you're just getting started, you're trying to get the ball rolling. So you could put in something like, I don't know, hair loss, for example. And then you could filter for all the results that pop up under 250 searches per month. So a lot of times you'll get around 700 or so keyword phrases as the results there you can filter it down. From there, you can filter based on what's in the keyword phrase. So maybe like how to or best. That depends on whether, of course, you're looking for an informational or a buyer's type keyword. Those keyword research tools allow you to filter in many different ways. So you can play with those and figure out the best way. And it helps you refine the results from, like I said, over 700 to something more those are the main concepts with the KGR. I have a lot of YouTube videos on the topic, including a playlist for the KGR Masterclass, which is a free playlist readily available. It's, I think it's almost 
couple hours worth of material. And you can have the spreadsheet for free. Now, let's look at how to use the KGR compliant keywords in content and some common concerns that come up when you're actually trying to write some content. So the KGR is based on publishers using the keyword in the title. That's, of course, the strongest indication about what the content is covering. So you should use the keyword phrase in the title. You can add other words to make it sound more enticing to click on, but having the keyword phrase at the beginning of the title is the best approach. It's easy to overuse the KGR phrase. Less is more in this case. So use the keyword phrase in the title once and then use it one more time in the copy. That's it, that's usually all I recommend. I will let you know if you're more aggressive and maybe you have a pretty strong background in on-page SEO, and you're more aggressive, then you can use the KGR term in a subheading as well. So that'd be an H2 or an H3 tag. If you use the sort of standard SEO plugin, Yoast SEO, you will end up stuffing your content with your keyword. So they have that uh, keyword density recommendation. And basically, you're gonna stuff your content with a keyword and it will prevent you from ranking. And that is why I actually don't like the Ghost SEO tool. It's for regular content creators. KGR is advanced, specialized, we're really getting in the weeds here. Usually, the KGR phrase is many words long because it is so specific for the search. So it's unnatural to use a long phrase many times in an article. It just sounds awkward. So again, just use the KGR in the title and once in the copy. Use normal standard SEO content practices and the rest of the content's just normal. If you hire a writer to do this uh, content for you, I usually don't give any special instructions. I'll just double check to make sure they didn't overdo it whenever I get the content. So again, just normal on-page SEO. Use subheadings to break up the content and use images with the proper alt text and captions, link to external sources that are helpful and maybe you use them to write the article. And link internal, always good to have internal links throughout your content. And some people wonder about combining keywords. And I normally just target one keyword per post and you'll naturally rank for other keywords through the long tail searches that come through. Now, I do like the singular focus and it's oriented towards the searcher intent versus an SEO trying to force keywords into a post. But sometimes combining keywords makes sense. Look at it this way. Think about the searcher and the problem that they want to solve. For example, let's consider these keyword phrases. Best blender for workout shakes and best blender for protein shakes. I would combine those terms into one post. The searchers are interested in working out, fitness, and consuming protein. They're healthy ideas. So I'd pick one of the keyword phrases for the title, and then probably, I'd probably pick the one that had the lower KGR value with less competition, and then I'd make sure to use that other phrase somewhere in the content as well, maybe in a subhead. Now, Let's say you also find a keyword, best blender for milkshakes. Well, that's a different search with a different problem. If that happens to be a new diet, I want to start because that, that sounds good. I love milkshakes. But obviously, the milkshake searcher or the protein shake searcher are different. They have different goals and they have different problems they're trying to solve. So the context of each post would be totally different. One would talk about ice cream and milk selection, while the other one talks about the amount of protein and healthy things. So I wonder if you could actually put ice cream into a protein shake. I guess if you're bulky, maybe. So anyway, the point is pair those keywords based on the search intent, and not your convenience or you trying to stuff keywords into content where it doesn't work. You might be wondering about keywords that have larger search volumes. I hear this question very often. What about a keyword that has a search volume over 250 with a KGR under 0.25? Can we go for that keyword? In fact, we, I mean, we, sh we looked at some of these. The key part of the keyword golden ratio is the low volume keywords. 
And I generally find the keywords with a larger search volume take longer to rank for. Not to mention, there's probably gonna be more competitors too. So if you did find a keyword with a KGR under 0.25, but the search volume is over 250, that is not a KGR keyword. It might still be a great keyword that you should publish. You should go for it, but it's not KGR. If you do have an established site with traffic, backlinks, it's out of the Google sandbox, which means generally it's over six months old, then you can be more relaxed on the keyword golden ratio. And I don't mention that too much because I want people to stick to the formula when they, when they test it out. Sometimes I target keywords with thousands of searches per month and a whole lot of competition. I'm not dogmatic at all about the KG. It's just one of the tools in the toolbox. Now, I'll talk a little bit about these uh, common questions and common issues that do arise. So keyword research tools aren't accurate. How can the KGR work? Keyword research tools show averages of the search volume based on historical data. So the exact search volume isn't exact. It's just an estimate. It is confusing because a lot of tools show a very specific number, like 42 searches per month or 157 per month. And when you're starting out, I mean, I, I didn't know this when I started. I thought it was completely accurate. I thought it was what, I thought that was the exact number of people searching for it per month, but it's just not the case. So I thought, you know, why would the tool give specific numbers if they aren't significant, if they aren't accurate? And the keyword search tools, they give you an idea about one keyword compared to another. It's more like predicting the weather. You have the directional idea, but it's not going to be exact. So in a relative sense, you can assume that keyword B gets like four times as much traffic as keyword A, right? You, you understand that in a relative sense. It's not really important to know the exact searches per month that a keyword is going to get in the future. And that's actually good because it's in the future. And we can't know that. The KGR works despite that, since it is an aggressive formula and we're dealing with lower search volume terms. Now, if I use the KGR, actually this is another question that comes in a lot. Now, if I use the KGR, should I still bother with backlinks, blog commenting, outreach, and all that stuff? The answer is yes. Promoting your site and getting backlinks is important. Depending on what kind of site you have, it can take uh, some time and effort to get rolling. And a lot of people don't want to put in the time and the sweat and equity to do the promotion and outreach and get out. Doing outreach for your site does take the time and you may be thinking it's, it's time that you're not able to create new content and publish more. So is it worth it? And you're probably wondering, do KGR posts rank well if you don't do any kind of outreach or link building or anything like that? The answer is yes. They're, they're probably going to rank. And how high they rank, I'm not sure. It depends on competition, the quality of the content, and just overall how authoritative of your site is. But here's the thing. If you do the outreach, if you do add links to your site, it's like adding fuel to the fire. So, may have a little bit of traction on your post already, but if you do some outreach, it's really pouring gas on the fire and you stand a chance to, number one, rank higher for that keyword, and number two, just have more long tail keywords pulling in traffic, because posts can rank higher for those long tail keywords as well. So, links help, that, that's the bottom line. Links will help you out. Now, Another common question is around a search volume of zero, all right? So if your local monthly search volume is zero, should you write content for it or not? If you're thinking about the keyword golden ratio, the math people are already ahead of me here, by the way. So you have the all in title divided by the local monthly search volume. So if you have any number divided by zero, you're in trouble. You have an undefined equation and you could throw the KGR out the window, right? You have an undefined formula, right? 
So should you write the content if you have a search volume of zero? Many people get confused because of that. So basically you maybe should write content for it, but there's a couple of criteria you should look at first. And actually I'm curious for people out there um, in the chat, let me know if you have targeted keywords with a zero search volume. Let me know how it went. So typically I say go for a zero search volume if it was a Google auto suggest. Even if the keyword search tools say zero search volume, if Google auto suggest tells you that it is one of those common phrases that people search for, you could assume that there are a decent number of people searching with that sort of intent. Oftentimes your competitors are not gonna target a zero search volume term, so it's a great opportunity. I've had great luck with zero search volume terms. Another common question is just, what about non-KGR keywords? You should publish content that targets higher search volume keywords with greater competition. Like I said, I'm not dogmatic about this. It's just one of the tools out there and it's especially effective for brand new sites where you have no history, you're still in the Google sandbox, so going after low competition is very helpful. Number two, if you have a site that is established but it's sort of stagnant in traffic, adding a lot of content that can rank quickly is a great thing to do. Probably get more traffic and another added benefit, which I alluded to earlier, was if you internally link, that's a really good thing. So if you add KGR content that will rank quickly and then you internally link from that content to and from, you have a very uh, sort of nice effect. A lot of times people see a pretty big boost overall for their rankings and traffic in general. So like I said before, you can bring in more traffic to an older website. It's gonna rank without building links directly to it. Some people do have that impression that I don't publish any content that doesn't meet the KGR. That's simply not true. I just end up talking about it a lot, especially on YouTube. And I think it's just one of those things that happened with YouTube. I, I developed the KGR when I needed more traffic to my website and the keyword difficulty scores and the research tools were not accurate at all. So when I was targeting keywords that should be very easy to rank in Google, they didn't rank at all. So I was actually pretty frustrated and I didn't quite know what to do now. I'm gonna go a little bit deeper here and just uh, mention that I was hanging out and talking to some folks in my mastermind group at the time. I'll just mention them by first name, give them a little shout out. So Shauna and Lewis, and Rob and Quentin. I was chatting with all those folks and pulled a lot of ideas together from those conversations and just to target those low competition keywords. And KGR sort of happened months later after I did a lot of testing, even more testing to sort of pressure, pressure the whole system to see if it would work. So let's hit the Q&A right now. All right, we're back live now and hopefully, that actually worked out okay. Thanks everybody for the patience. We were ran into issues earlier. I see um, a couple people in the chat mentioned answering questions uh, for me, so appreciate that. And I'll send it back to Shelby here to MC in a sec, but Anita did mention that uh, there was a zero search volume term that they went for and it's had 14,000 visitors since the first of the year. So good piece of data. Um, so now is the time um, to send in some questions that you might have for Doug. Um, it'd be helpful if you use the Q&A question just because it's our, our Q&A feature, just because it's a little easier to track all the questions, but um, you can also send them through the chat. Um, but while you are all uh, submitting your questions in, I do want to announce that um, so at each session, we are giving away a publisher stimulus, as we like to call it. Um, so Tanner Plum. Um, you are our winner for this session, so um, I'll go ahead and get in touch with you after this session. Um, if anyone is watching and has won in a previous session from today, I, I will also message you after this, um, just waiting towards uh, the end of the day to do it all at once. Um, so we do have one question in here, and it's, uh, Doug, what kind of webcam are you using? The quality is great. Thanks. It's actually a DSLR. 
So it is a Canon, this one's a Canon RP and it has a 35 mil 1.8. And the other clip that you saw, I was using a T7i and it has a Sigma. I think the lens is super important. I really was doing research for like cameras. So the other lens is a Sigma 18 to 35, also 1.8. So yeah, well, I was using my webcam earlier and it looks like garbage. I could show you just really quickly. Uh, oops, that's wrong. I could show you this. Yeah, looks awful, right? And then I switched to the good camera and I thought that looks wonderful. So thanks. Very cool. Yeah, that's some fancy equipment you've got there. Um, we'll give you all another uh, minute or so to get any questions that you might have um, answered in. And then um, for those who are saying that the video looked a little blurry, Doug, Doug and I will we'll work together um, to get something for you guys. Yes. Yep. I can definitely send it over the file and everything. And I could just hit some other common questions that sometimes I see. So, you know, one of them is, hey, should I go for zero search volume? And another one is, should I go for a search volume of 10, which you can imagine there's a similar answer where basically, you know, if you're, if you were studying people that talked about publishing content or going after keywords with thousands of searches, you probably think this is absolutely a waste of time, but it's really, it's really not. I mean, everyone has a different approach and going after higher search volume terms is hundred percent valid, but usually it takes longer to rank. And if it's a brand new site that will take much longer to rank, you end up in the Google sandbox, which is sort of a, um, it's a, I guess it's not proven. It's a concept where it generally takes six months to start ranking as well as your site should. And I hear there's like another one after a year. So it could be a little bit less, could be a little bit more, but a lot of times people will say, yeah, my site hit six months old and traffic lifted and rankings went up and it was clear on analytics and ranking tools and that sort of thing, so. All right, we have a couple, uh, sorry, a couple of questions. The first one is, why is it better to check all in title number results rather than the standard number of results for a keyword, keyword? So in this case, we're using it to see what publishers are intentionally targeting a keyword. So if it's just show if you if you search for a term and it just shows up, you will probably find that, especially when you go deep, a lot of a lot of the posts out there are not actually targeting that term at all, especially if it's some obscure long tail thing. It's just random stuff that those words happen to be on there and Google thinks maybe that's the searcher intent. So you do all entitled to filter out all the other noise because I mean you can imagine if you search for some term you're going to end up with like 16 million results and that's not really that helpful I'm not sure what you do with that so all entitled finds the content that is intentionally targeting that set of uh, words all right our next question is it often makes sense to target a long tail keyword on a post targeting a broader or more highly searched keyword rather than getting its own post um, how do you determine when a post should target the um, keyword golden ratio keyword versus just targeting a bigger more general keyword there's a couple ways to go with this so i'll give you a couple options so if you have a brand new site i would aim towards the kgr term because you'll have a better chance to rank for that in the short term and if you have an established site it's authoritative you have search traffic coming in you rank well you have links going to your site all those things maybe go after the, the bigger term and see how it goes the other sort of approach would be to use the KGR as a content cluster, right? So it's some concept, I don't know who created it, but it's similar to a, a silo of content where maybe you have that larger search volume term with not super in depth, but you know, it's a thorough article, but it doesn't go deep in any one area. 
and then you could have a series of articles that hit those very specific keywords, specific questions, specific how-to information, and then all those are interlinked and they all sort of help each other out. And then you could target um, potentially a larger keyword and have the supporting articles that are KGR type keywords. Um, the next question is, can you explain again why a zero search volume term gets significant traffic? Um, is it because it ranks for multiple long tail phrases? Um, what's, what's the theory behind that? Yes, so you have it, Anita, basically multiple long tail phrases and I don't know the stat, I'll make, I'll make one up and people can verify it later, but I, it's something like one third of all the searches each day have never been searched for in, in the past. So they're like, they're brand new and it's potentially because of like a uh, voice search. So people are saying some long phrase, but when it comes down to it, it's, you know, something that you're potentially trying to rank for. And then, you know, the other is people just type things in in the wrong order or weird. It's stream of consciousness. So they may just type things in like best mirrorless camera, travel, backpack, airplane. Like it, it doesn't make sense. No one else would search for that, but maybe it lands on, you know, your travel blog where you talk about the camera that you got. All right, uh, we'll give you another minute or so to uh, get your questions in. But in the meantime, Doug, um, where can everybody find you in terms of, um, I know you're on YouTube and um, some other different channels and platforms. Sure, yeah, so YouTube, I have a ton of content on the keyword golden ratio. There's a free master class there. So obviously you're, you're interested in long tail keywords. So I would point you there. And I have a blog called Niche Site Project where it goes a little bit more in depth in certain areas. And I have a podcast. So would love to have people um, check out the podcast as well. It's called The Doug Show. I talk about affiliate marketing and SEO primarily. A lot of success stories. So from you know, people that are under a year in and they, they just hit their first you know, $500 per month or $1,000 per month. And then you know, experience people that are making 40 or 50k per month that sort of thing so a lot of success stories out there that's a really cool concept i find that even if um you know it's a small or a large publisher there's always a lot to learn from each other no matter what size um so we've got a couple more questions in so how does kgr relate to cannibalization um, is there any risk associated with that yeah great question there is a risk and for the people that don't know cannibalization is a, a situation that happens when google doesn't know what to rank on your site exactly so uh, maybe you have a keyword that's um oh we, we could use the one i talked about earlier the the best blender for protein shakes and then best blender for workout shakes so generally it's, it's kind of the same idea it's just the, the person used a different word so what might happen is you publish those two pieces of content separately. They're uniquely written in all that stuff. You've, you've done best practices in both cases for on-site SEO. You publish that content, and then instead of having one of those rank number one for the term that it's going for, maybe they both rank like eight and nine, or maybe like 13 and 14. It's really common for um, cannibalization to happen in, in those two posts that are similar will rank right next to each other, but further down than if it was just one piece. So you're cannibalizing your search results. And basically it is a risk. I often you know, mention that sort of example where if you think about the end user, if it's the same searcher, then combine the content and get rid of the other one if you observe this happen. And then you can 301 redirect, you can, is it, technical problem to solve. It's not super difficult, but you can 301 redirect and then take care of that cannibalization issue. But it can happen. And if you do notice it, usually it's a good idea to take care of it. Again, do that 301 redirect. The best way, of course, is to avoid it and think about the searcher intent. But sometimes Google just, you know, does something that you don't expect. So you have to react to the actual results there. Um, the next question is, can you use the KGR strategy for a new site with different categories, or is it 
kind of just best to use it for a niche site? You could use it in that capacity. Yep, it's universal. Um, what are your recommendations for building backlinks? So that's definitely beyond the scope of what we'd cover here since it's keyword oriented, but uh, typically I like a like networking approach where it takes a long time to do so other people can't recreate it um, as easily without putting in their time as well. So from that, you can you know reach out to blogs, podcasts, YouTubers, like make those relationships. People that do those things know other people that are influencers as well. So if you can build the relationships and get you know shout outs um, in a natural way, that's great. Additionally, if you create content that is sort of original to you, so if you could do any sort of research or if you can run a survey and publish data, like that will probably get its own links. And if you tell people about it, it will almost definitely get links and people will want to share it and talk about it. And just to go one step further since I'm, I'll try to you know give you some good stuff to work with if you don't have a huge audience right now um, one thing you can do is find influencers in that area see if they will send traffic to a survey that you put together let them know hey you can get access to the survey data as well you just need to send people my way link to the original data link to the original survey however you want to set it up and then they'll have unique data as well you're the hub, you've pulled everything together. So you could literally have like, you know, not much traffic, not much going on, but if you organize stuff, then you're the hub. People see you as someone that's bringing things together. So that's a great way to sort of just shortcut, become someone who's an influencer that knows other folks too. All right, we just have a couple more minutes. So if, if you do have a question, make sure to send it in. Um, this next one is, does it make sense to try and rank a topic page for a keyword slash subdirectory index page on a large site? It depends on what you're trying to do. So this is a stupid answer, but if it makes sense for you to rank such a page, then yeah, that'd be great. It would make sense, and I'm not in this area, but if you had an e-commerce site and you ranked a category page that had mirrorless cameras, between four and five hundred dollars then yeah that's a slam dunk right it totally makes sense to do that but typically i don't have that specific scenario so you know any page that fits into your funnel however you design it or however you're monetizing then it completely makes sense to do that all right um is there any way to get the kgr results in a batch sure yeah I've, i that's probably one of the most common questions. So no, not really. You can, you potentially can automate some things if you write a script and the thing that can happen, I didn't mention this before, but if you run all in title or if you use the all in title command a few times in a row, Google will say, hey, there's unusual activity coming from your machine. They wanna make sure you're not a bot. So you'll have to type in a CAPTCHA where they show you like the fuzzy letters and you have to type that in or just click a button to say, yep, I'm not a robot. But there's not a great way to automate it. And I, yep, I'll, I'll just leave it at that because there's a bunch of different ways you can solve it. But generally, part of the reason why this works is it's manual and people are lazy. So if you spend the time to go and look for the keywords and struggle through for a couple hours before you find a pocket of them and kind of get your stride with that set. I mean, you're going to come out ahead because other people are going to try to find some shortcut to do it. So if you do put in the time, um, Yoan, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing your name right, then you'll probably find keywords that other people were too lazy to, to even search for. All right. Um, we'll give it a few more seconds, but I think that was the last question anyone has a, um, one more they want to include in, go ahead and get that in now. All right. Yeah. Thanks everybody for uh, hopping on and watching. And uh, Shelby, thanks for your, your patience and your great idea to just put the microphone next to the speaker. <laughs>
that's what I'm here for. Um, thank you so much, Doug, for taking your time to do this all and answer all our questions. Um, for those who are still on, we will have three more webinars tomorrow, um, and it'll be our last day of our Pubtelligence virtual series. Um, you will have access to the recordings. Um, and I think that's all, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us, and have a great rest of your day.